ladies and gentlemen, friends of Frisbee, uh, those of you here on the fields and those watching at home, welcome to the second day of the 2022 Tri-Series here in beautiful Tamaki Makoto. Thankfully, our application for good weather was approved by the council. The sun is out today. There's no more drizzle at the moment. Um, conditions are optimal for Ultimate. The sun is shining. The teams are here smiling. Our first match today between the under-20 women's division, uh, New Zealand versus Australia, Kahu versus Southern Terra. My name, as always, is Blair Monroe. It is a privilege and a pleasure to be here, to be your eyes and ears on the ground, to talk you through uh, some of the best Ultimate you're going to see in the Southern Hemisphere, proudly supported by New Zealand Ultimate and, of course, our friends over at Ulti TV. The score currently nil all. New Zealand to come out on defense. Zara Bowen with the pull. Fades high into the left to the near sideline. Touches down out of bounds. Australia with an opportunity. Uh, potentially to brick the disc, but unclear. They might take it in from the sideline. We've got Warnock to initiate the offense for the Southern Terra. Marked by Brown. Charles with an undercut early. Taking a little bit of time to adjust to the conditions early. The disc slips out of Warnock's hands for a quick turnover. A great take by Simard. Clark works the far side of the sideline. Warnock applying just enough pressure to Claridge. No call was made. There was a bit of contact, but the position was under control ahead of time. Mackay tries to find Childs. Slight collision with Grant. Not able to get hand to it. Clark to initiate. Supported in the downfield space by Bowen. Tries to work that far side, find, uh, far side line, finding Simard. Unable to do it. Position going back to Australia. Early morning games takes a little time for these teams to adjust. We saw the warm-ups. We saw the intensity that they're bringing. Great cross-field shot for Childs. Overthrows Doan. Australia back on defense. New Zealand less than half the field to work. Hoping to put one on the board. Bowen puts up a huge backhand. Big Bowen with the assist. Great throw. Well floated out into space. Donaldson to run on to calmly. New Zealand up by one. Australia to come out on offense again. New Zealand with an early break. Zealand to field their defensive line again. One, once more, we see the entire Australian team take the field, making sure that everyone is on board. They're getting the silent information that they need. It's exactly what New Zealand wanted. Early start to the game. Having gone undefeated in yesterday's matches, two wins over the uh, New Zealand, uh, sorry, the Australian Thunder, the under-20 men's team. New Zealand putting out an impressive performance over Australia yesterday, and also over the Japanese under-20 women's side in the afternoon. Brianna Murgatroyd with the disc for New Zealand. Some great Australian powerhouses on the line for the offense. Kotudiwaka, Lee, Buxa, Ha. A lot of float on that disc. Plenty of time for the defense to get into position. Evelyn Hard to pick up and initiate. We see the New Zealand zone coming out. Three players up the front trying to pressure the disc, trying to force the disc to the sideline. We see Lee calm and in control. Puts a big hammer up. Finds Buxer. Comfortable. Big backhand looking for Koning. It's pressured. Whitlock can't get there in time. The zone resets. Wentworth Pang takes the reset. 
Back to Lee in center field. Ha trying to provide the support. Hoping for something in the downfield to crash through that zone. Koning's the one who gets it. Back to Lee, Wentworth Pang, wide open on the sideline. The zone closes off that option. Lee again calling for cuts through. Wonga Chu. Coming back upfield to help out. Lee on an upline cut. There's a big shot up wide. It's floating. And Buxer pulls it down. Cat Buxer, an absolute dynamo for this Australian side. Doing the most work and with conditions a little bit settled. We don't have that same strong wind. We don't have to play as conservatively as we did yesterday. So we're seeing these Australian ladies really uncork those cannons. We saw Megan Lee with a great big forehand, big cross field shot, managed to find a receiver. Great work by Australia to bounce back, bringing it back to a one all game. Fantastic effort so far. This is the match we've been hoping to see between these two teams all weekend. When conditions are great, things are warm, things are a little dry, bodies are fresh. Mackay with the disc for the pull for the Southern Terror. Brown, Lawson, Mather, Fulton for the offense. Disc goes high and wide out in the near sideline. <laughs> Some huge sideline support from the Australian side as New Zealand set up on a side stack. One handler in the backspace. Cat Fulton looking to be isolated. Gets open and gets the disc. Working with Clark to Mather on the far sideline. Unmarked, puts a big forehand up. Doan gets underneath it and comes down with it. Great defense there by the Australian side. Childs to Warnock. Jenkins. Comes just off the hands of Harriet Jenkins. Great vision to try and move that disc. Not able to secure that throw. Clark sets up not too far from the end zone. Finds Fulton. Big fake to shift Mackay. Back across to Lawson. Pressured by the Australian defense. Sawyer manages to get it eventually. A little bit of a bobble. Maintains control. Jams it forward, goes through, finds Mather. Big forehand up to the far sideline. Pulled down by none other than Gao. Great work by the New Zealand side for a great offensive hold. We go 2-1 up over Australia. Still anybody's game, an early break. Then a hold, and then a hold. Team's trading at the moment. Zara Bowen with the disc. A couple of last minute tips from Coach Ian Stewart. A close game. Those little margins is determined by what the coaches are able to see and observe on the field and how they're able to communicate that to their players to manifest on the field. It's going to make all the difference. A 
Australia on the line. Again, solid Australian offenders. Ida Rosenthal, Georgia Asprey, Megan Lee, Kat Buxer. Evelyn Hard to pick up an initiated vertical stack, uh, spreading to a horizontal to accommodate the New Zealand zone defence. Simard to marking the disc, but Ha is able to get one away. Rosenthal looking to crash through. Great positioning. Had the space, but the throw didn't come away. New Zealand with an opportunity here. Zara Bowen. Another backhand. Just overthrown. Simard can't chase that one down. Australian possession as we go back the other way. Full field ahead. We're anticipating that New Zealand zone. But as conditions are a lot more stable than they were yesterday, Australia have the opportunity to really threaten that deep space. They've got Kat Buxer, who does a fantastic job just reeling down just about any disc. They've got Megan Lee and Evelyn Ha who have the throws. They can utilize that length a little bit more. But those early morning jetters give position back to New Zealand. Ha shutting off Simard on a great cut. Cat shutting down. The up line nearly manages to get it. Bowen comes up over the top. Lewis clears out. Open space for Claridge to reset. King Griffin works back. Bowen tries to get it away. Grant unable to come down with that one. But great offensive flow by the New Zealand side. Megan Lee pinned down by Claridge. Bucks are developing a deep cut. Bucks are on the chase. There's pressure from King Griffin, but Buxer comes down with it. Suddy cutting wide. Not able to pull that one down. A little more kindness on the throw. Might have gotten that completion. Might have led to a score there for Australia. New Zealand now on offense, setting up in a, a vertical stack again, trying to create channels along the width of the field. King Griffin manages to sell Suddy deep. But the disc goes high. Suddy's able to cover that one, supported by Megan Lee. Simard on disc. McCoy, Claridge, shutting down, trying to force those lateral passes wherever possible. Bowen in the mid space, hoping to make her presence known. Southern Terra very pinned down on that far sideline. Cutters aren't helping them to generate the width they need to work around this zone. Hart isn't able to secure the reset. The position goes back to New Zealand. Donaldson cuts across the front of the handler space. Bounces back to Bowen. Puts a big forehand up looking for Samad. Same team, ladies, same team. Samad comes down with it. Big Bowen strikes again. Two assists on the board as New Zealand go 3-1 over the Southern Terra. Zealand to come out on defense. Fulton to pull. Mather, Ogilvy, Swinson, Murgatroyd, Whitlock, some very powerful defenders here. 
Their zone defense seems to be generating those turns. Australia are a little bit slow to adapt to that. Still anybody's game, only two points in it. Plenty of time for those confident handlers, confident offensive players on the Australian side to be able to better recognize where the space is and start utilizing it to chip around that zone. Once they're able to work around that zone, if they're able to tire it out, it quickly takes away that numerical advantage that a zone puts on. Um, quite often you'll have three of your uh, upfield players, your handlers, marked by four, possibly even five defenders. Once you can break past that first line, all of a sudden it's a game of, of seven versus three, and the offense is in a great position to just quick, quickly chain passes up the field. Warnock and Mackay. Looks like New Zealand have gone back to a match defense. Doan manages to get separation. Lewis able to pull that one down. But position goes back to New Zealand. Murgatro with the disc, trying to find him a Whitlock, puts a big bladey backhand around. Blackburn hoping to shut down the long shot, manages to do it. Whitlock scrambling, has to work sideways. Lewis can't pull that one down. Australia in a great position here as Mackay picks up the disc. Puts a big shot up. Cat Fulton for New Zealand with the big block. Not in my house, she says. Some great pressure. It was an awesome look from the Australian side. Great vision, seeing an open defender. And Fulton's closing speed was just too much. She manages to get up, vie for the disc, and bring it down. Giving position back to New Zealand. Woodlock pressured by Blackburn. Swinson on a great open undercut. Has to go all the way back into the handler space to get that disc. Comes wide to Fulton. Marked by Langston. Cheeky foot block isn't able to get it. Ogilvy with the disc. Marked by Doan. Works back with Whitlock. Far sideline now. Murgatroyd puts up a big shot. It's blading early, but Swinson's got it. Trying to shift the aggressive Mackay. Has to look back. Finds Whitlock. Who goes, Cat Fulton? That's bookends, Cat Fulton on the block. And the score to round out that possession for the New Zealand side. Great work by number 10 for New Zealand as we go 4-1, New Zealand up over Australia. And so, a great start to the second day of our Tri-Series, New Zealand, Australia, Japan. We have here New Zealand, Kahu, the under-20 women's side, and the Southern Terra, the under-20 Australian side. Early days in the game, New Zealand up by three. The score currently 4-1 in our game to 15. In Tamaki Makoto, beautiful and sunny as we always expected it to be, despite our disappointing weather yesterday teams played through it they showed their grit and determination and they've come back for a second day to do it again <laughs> Bowen with the pull Sends it long, low, and flat. Lee, supported by Asprey in the upfield space. We see that New Zealand zone again. Bowen trying to cover the mid. Making sure nothing goes through, that they're forced to go around. Wentworth Ping with the disc. Great movement by the Australian side. Asprey, the go disc goes high. She goes up for it, but it's a little bit touched out of the hands. We 
We hear the call for a New Zealand ISO. Looking to pick one cutter, that's Sawyer. And then wide open on the far side of the field. Bowen racking up stats like it's nobody's business. Involved in three, I believe, of New Zealand's uh, five scores so far. Zara Bowen, big Bowen proving absolutely crucial to this New Zealand defensive line at the moment, helping to pressure the middle of that zone, forcing Australia, the Southern Terror, to go wide, working around that arrowhead, generating those turns and then able to close comfortably uh, with very, very precise throws. Uh, no hesitation on those, able to shift a mark using those fakes, causing the defense to dance a little bit, creating these openings for New Zealand to slowly chip away at the scoreline. Some great players on the field for both sides. Kat Fulton with the disc for New Zealand. Monster pull, it goes high. New Zealand with a very, very aggressive chase. Sticking to a match defense this time. Shutting down the first throw. Whitlock gets it. And it's Grant who rips it down. And a timeout's been called. 6-1, New Zealand up over Australia. Timeout has been called. Both teams jogging onto the field, taking a moment. Australia calling a timeout, hopefully to disrupt the momentum that New Zealand has had. Great chase by Swinson there on that point. Shutting down those early throws. Uh, Grant covering Megan Lee for the reset, forcing that throw to go wide. Whitlock in great position to snatch that one up and close the point out early. Huge amount of momentum, quick points that we're seeing after quick turns. The pressure from the New Zealand defense is um, immense. It's almost insurmountable. It must feel that way for the Australian side. But coach uh, from the sideline recognizes that these ladies do have a lot of potential. They do know how to play this game. They do have as much energy as the New Zealanders. It's just calling that timeout to give them a moment to cool their heads and remind them of that fact. And so hopefully after this timeout, we're going to see a completely different side of the Australian team. We're going to see them come out firing. Uh, there's not a lot of wind uh, happening at the moment, but so far we are only seeing uh, New Zealand play that zone defense predominantly as they're attacking the end zone at the right-hand side of your screen. So chances are high. We'll see that zone defense come out after this point, or on this point, rather. Um, we know that Australia has the talent to be able to work around uh, that zone defense, even with players like Big Bowen in the middle space. And so hopefully uh, this timeout is going to bring out a different side of the Australians. And we're going to see... Uh, a very, very competitive match, and hopefully the scoreline will reflect the intensity that they've brought overseas uh, to Tamaki Makoto at Auckland Grammar uh, for the 2022 Tri-Series, um, brought to you at the moment by Ulti TV in conjunction with New Zealand Ultimate. If you like what you see, check the link in the description to buy a virtual ticket to this event. Help support our youth players in Ultimate. Uh, play at a competitive level, to play at a high level. Uh, and, and really do this country proud. Um, and then once you've done that, 
Take your spare change over to patreon.com slash TV. Give us your spare change. Um, it helps us bring you events like this so that you can see the very best, not only in New Zealand Ultimate, but on an international stage. Kahu, New Zealand under 20 women's team, first to break the huddle at the timeout. Australia taking that moment. There it is. They break now with a big cheer. They certainly seem more fired up. Zealand two points away from taking half in the game to 15. Emma Doyle, a well pedigreed uh, player in her own right, providing some additional support for the New Zealand seven, taking the line now. The real coach. And once again, that full team culture that we see from Australia as they all take the line, making sure everyone's on the same page. They know where encouragement is needed. They know where information is needed. We saw how sharp the Australians were uh, during the warm-up, before the game, uh, looking at some horizontal cutting patterns from a stack to utilize the shallow space towards the disc and the deep space towards the end zone. We'll see how that manifests in this next point. Murgatroyd with the disc. Mackay gives this ready uh, signal for Australia. There it is, big shot. Ah, we do see New Zealand pick a match defense, and Mackay lets one rip immediately. Langston, Lewis, and Wu all underneath that. But it's Lewis who comes away with it. Finds Suchi Wu on the reset. Back to Mackay. Finds Warnock, far sideline, a bladey forehand off the hands of Suchi Wu. Straight into the waiting, receiving arms of Saskia Blackburn. A great score there by Australia. 6-2, exactly what they needed. That timeout certainly did the trick. The energy is there from the Australian sides. We can see it now. The hustle, the intensity, the teamwork, the recognition of the space. The willingness to provide support, the hunger. We saw three of their players get up under the one disc. Every single person on that line was committed to making sure that that disc stayed in Australian possession. And they managed to pull it off. 6-2, a four-point game. Australia to come out on defense now. And again, with those conditions a lot more stable, we are seeing some of those more aggressive options from those uh, Australian handlers. Mackay, Lewis, willing to put those forehands out into space, willing to trust their receivers to pull those discs down. Ha, Buxa, Wong or Chu. Suddy, taking the line now for the Australian defense. For the New Zealand offense, King Griffin, Zara Bowen again, Swinson, Whitlock, Lawson, Mather, Sawyer.
Boxer lets loose with a nice disc going almost the full length of the playing field. Lawson given an opportunity to reset early, but Sutty shuts down that first pass. Bowen on an upline, up unmarked as New Zealand sets up a side sack, hoping to isolate Sawyer in the end zone. Graham's underneath it, shuts down Sawyer. Great work by Meg Graham. Ha on an upline, 4v4. But Ha beats Whitlock. Let's rip with a big forehand looking for Buxer in the end zone. King Griffin cannot get in the way. Cat Buxer, ladies and gentlemen. Cat lets someone else on the team score, bud. Good thing there are physios. Cat Buxer's going to have a sore back after carrying the team this weekend. I'm just kidding, of course. The ladies are doing an amazing work. Really grinding, really working together, passing to each other, keeping connected, keeping in space, keeping everyone's energy up. And it just so happens that Cat Buxer seems to be finding herself holding a disc in the end zone. But it is important to recognize that is definitely a reflection of the entire team's effort in generating those turns and maintaining possession. The score is now 6-3. Australia, two on the bounce after calling that timeout. Veteran move by the coach there, giving the Australian side an opportunity to mentally reset. And as predicted, we have seen a different side to these Australians firing out uh, as, as they take the field. Zealand getting a little bit of last minute advice from coach Ian Stewart. Their defense so far having failed to stop Australia the Southern Terror. After that crucial timeout, Mackay, huge pull. Lawson leaves it. We see the same thing again. Emma Whitlock is an isolation cutter from New Zealand side stack. Puts a big forehand up. Langston wants to get underneath it to shut down Swinson, but Swinson comes down with it. 7-3, one point away from New Zealand taking half. A great offensive hold there for New Zealand. We saw great use of those uh, very dominant players. Um, New Zealand setting up a side stack, creating the entire space of the field as a playground for Emma Whitlock there to get open. And the timing of Swinson's cut to the deep space after that disc had left uh, Lawson's hand. Absolutely perfect, finds herself uh, in open space, pressured heavily by Langston in those last few seconds. But the Southern Terra was not able to come down with that one. So New Zealand go back up to a four point game, 7-3 over the Southern Terra. In the second of two matches between these teams in our 2022 Tri-Series in Tamaki Makoto. Lewis, Gao, Simard, Grant, Fulton on the New Zealand defense line. They've done some fantastic work. Cat Fulton with a huge pull on the near sideline. Goes high. Plenty of time for New Zealand to set their defense. We are seeing a match defense again. Fulton trying to cover Childs. Mackay puts a big one deep. Looking for Langston, but Simard denies it. Claridge marked by Childs. Childs gets a hand to it, but Fulton keeps security. Pressured by Jenkins. Tries to go over the top. Off the hands of Claridge. A huge layout to keep that one in possession. There's the big rip of a backhand, but it's fading early. 
It's what they call the conservation of greatness. Huge layout by Claridge to keep that one in position. The throw just leaves a little to be desired as it fades away from Samad in the deep space, giving position back to Australia. Jenkins trying to pressure the deep space. Australia has those throws. Fulton gets in the way. New Zealand here meters away from a score. Claridge with the disc, hoping for a bit of redemption. There's the big backhand over the top of Fulton, over the top. But not over the top of Mackay. Doan with a great cut as Fulton is distracted. Puts a big backhand up. Lewis is going for it. Lewis has got it. Childs, an opportunity to push deep. Doesn't take it. Hopes to be the reset. Mackay pressuring the up line. Trying to get separation from Donaldson. What a huge chop step to get inside. Puts one big for Doan with a huge layout grab. What an amazing score for Trinity Doan, 20 for the Southern Terror. But cannot stress enough the fancy footwork by <laughs> our very own Paige Mackay, Southern Terror. Huge work there. Pressured on the up line by Donaldson, not able to get it. A chop step back inside that quick change of direction. Getting position on a very short throw, a difficult throw. Finding Trinity Doan streaking into the deep space. Puts the throw up as it fades towards the right. Doan has position, huge layout grab, gets the score. Brings it back to a three-point game. This is what it's all about. Sunny weather chasing 175 grams of plastic around a field. Absolutely phenomenal effort from the Southern Terra here. New Zealand with an opportunity now for their offensive line to take half in a game to 15. Ogilvy, Murgatroyd, Bowen. Brown and Clark on the line for New Zealand. Some defensive powerhouses for the Australian side. Buxer, Lee, Ha, Wong Rachu. Possibly the most dynamic block of the tournament seen yesterday. The pull goes up, fades high to the near side. And so the disc is going to be bricked. There's no positional advantage to throwing it from out of field. We see that same side stack again. Hoping to create an isolation space for Clark in the midfield. Whitlock to initiate. Just a bit of communication as to where exactly that brick mark is. Should be in the middle of the field, 18 meters in front of the defensive end zone. Bucks are on the mark trying to pressure it. Clark gets the desk. Wongrichu shuts down that first deep shot looking for Ogilvy. Buxer nearly gets it out of the hands of Whitlock. Works the far sideline, finds Big Bowen. Evelyn Ha applying that pressure. Whitlock on a very, very narrow, highly pressured upline cut. Doesn't manage to get the disc. Wong and Chu shuts down the next shot. Clark to Whitlock, near sideline. Buxer wants a piece. New Zealand having to revise their strategy, but Bowen gets away from Ha, finds the disc far sideline. Works with Brown, marked by Koning. Brown on the far sideline, very close to the end zone. High blade goes up, but Whitlock comes down with it. There's the big backhand, possibly overthrown. But Bowen comes down with it. Looks like trying to determine whether or not she was in bounds when she first sustained control of the disc.
just another opportunity to remind you about my upcoming petition to change the rules of the World Flying Disc Federation and the update from 2024, the rule of cool. If it looks that good and you get it on camera, you kind of have to let them have it. It's a great layout. But it looks like it has been called out. It's a great spirit on display. Huge throw by Whitlock, maybe a little close to the end zone for something like that. Uh, a bit too much depth in terms of, of what the playing boundary allows. Australia sitting up in a vertical stack. Megan Lee. Big crossfield break to Buxa. Shifts Whitlock. Finds Koning. Marked by Murgatroyd. Able to reset to Ha. Megan Lee on an undercut. Pressured by Bowen. It doesn't come. McCoy on the desk. Ha puts a big one up. Who's underneath it? Georgia Brown. Brown shuts that one down. We hear the sideline call for horizontal. Whitlock finds Bowen near sideline. Lee tries to shut that down. And does a good job of it, pressuring the throw just enough that Brown cannot get a hand to it. Bowen and Lee. Lee puts one up. Great pressure by Whitlock. Stops Bucks are getting the disc. It would have been a huge opportunity there for Australia. Brown marked by Wong Chu. Clark on an up line. Layout in front of the camera for that one. Marked by Suddy. Works wide. Finds Whitlock. Whitlock puts one up to Bowen. Marked by Lee. Doesn't get up. Doesn't stop the forehand. Out of the hands of Alicia McCoy. A Morrinsville native. And an injury's been called. Suddy for Australia to be substituted for Asprey. Ogilvy for Ocean Samad. As New Zealand take a substitution as they're allowed to when a, an injury is called. Some great spirit on display by both of these teams, particularly with that previous uh, out call as... Um, after uh, Zara Bowen's impressive layout grab. Uh, just a reminder for those watching at home, this is a self-officiated sport. As the forehand goes wide, Lee with a great layout, tries to get it, can't manage it. Uh, but players take it upon themselves. There it is, a great score. A little chippy around backhand from Bowen to Whitlock, and then Whitlock to Clark for the score. Some great work by New Zealand to take half. And so we will be back after a short break for the second half of this exciting match, the last match that we'll see between the New Zealand women's uh, under-20 Kahu and the Australian under-20 women's the Southern Terror in our Trans-Tasman Tri-Series, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, and Tamaki Makoto in 2022. Um, my name is Blair Monroe, and we will be back with you for the second half of this exciting match very soon.
second half of the first game of the second day of the, <laughs> the Trans-Tasman, the Tri-Series here in Tamaki Makoto, New Zealand, Australia, Japan. Our first match of the day is New Zealand Kahu, the under-20 women's team, facing off against the impressive Southern Terra. Score currently 8-4 in favour of New Zealand, who put on an impressive performance in the first half. They were up by five at one point. It was 6-1. Australia called a crucial timeout. We've seen an entirely different side to these Australian ladies uh, during the last parts of that first half. Still anybody's game, a game to 15. New Zealand seven away from victory. Australia, a little bit of a longer road, but they can definitely pull it off. A little bit of uh, half-time communication with the teams, trying to make little adjustments. Uh, but the key thing is with the conditions a lot more stable than they were yesterday in terms of wind, in terms of wet. We're seeing a lot more dynamic play from both these sides, a lot more big grabs, big plays. Very, very exciting to watch. Claridge, Mather for New Zealand, supported by Lawson. Huge pressure from Meg Graham. Manages to cause a fumble right in front of the Australian attacking end zone. Evelyn Ha supported by Asprey as Australia set up a vertical stack at the back of the end zone. Cat Boxer wants to get underneath it. The throw a little bit squiffy, but a foul has been called. So just a reminder, this is a non-contact sport and also a self-officiated game. Players take it upon themselves to learn the rules, to make calls and resolve them on the field. So we just saw a foul uh, signal. And the question is, uh, do the players think it was going to happen? It looks like... Um, they're unable to come to an agreement as to whether or not um, whether or not it had an impact. So it looks like the foul was accepted. And so the disc needs to be checked in in order for players to move. Once that's happened, uh, then the disc can be brought to the front of the end zone and play can resume. So Australia keep possession. Boxer with the disc. All right, play now resuming. Boxer right on the doorstep. Great cut by Meg Graham. Rosenthal tries to give another one. Ha for the score. Boxer on the other end of the scoring pair for a change. Normally the one holding the disc in the end zone. This time the one with a comfortable throw through to Evelyn Ha and a great upline cut for the score. Back within three as Australia go. 5-8 against New Zealand. Anybody's game. So, a game to 15 or 100 minutes on the soft cap. We are currently in our 57th minute, so we're a little over halfway in terms of how long we have on the clock for this game. But once the score hits 15 for either of these teams, it will be over. The Australian defense to come out. We see Mackay, Warnock, Langston, Childs, Lewis, Jenkins, and Doan to face off against Big Bowen. Number 84 for the New Zealand side. Grant, Lewis, Simard. Whitlock. Gow, McCoy. Mackay lets a big one rip. There's a lot of length to that. A great pull fielded early by Bowen. Finds Whitlock. New Zealand sitting up in a horizontal stack. Langson slowly closing in the pressure, wanting to shut down the trap. But Lewis gets it. Lewis v. Lewis. Grant's in a field with Bowen. 
wants to put a big rip up, rip up but Langston shuts that down. Quick flash at the throwing lane. Great work by Gao. Sketchy reset, but Bowen gets it. The backhand up to the near side. Simard pressured by Jenkins. Back to Bowen. Langston covering. Whitlock gets it. Laser beam of a forehand to Lewis McCoy. And a travel has been called on the throw. So McCoy pulled the disc down just outside of the end zone. So once the travel is resolved, Alicia McCoy will have the disc just outside the end zone, hoping to score for New Zealand. The first point out of half for New Zealand. Grant on a great upline cut, but Bowen gets the reset. Winds up a big crossfield backhand for Simard. Great score there by New Zealand to go 9-5, trying to keep that margin there in their favor. Fulton with the disc to pull for New Zealand as we once again see the full Australian team having a cheeky sit down on their line. Ha, Katutiwaka, Rosenthal, Lee, Koning, Buxa, Asprey. Great offensive presence here for the Australian side, the Southern Terror. Hopefully we'll see a little bit more uh, pressure as they threaten those long options and see how New Zealand are able to respond. New Zealand ready on the line. Australia clearing theirs, leaving just those seven players behind. We're gonna determine what happens in this next point. Are New Zealand going to break double digits on this score or will Australia keep it to a three point margin? <laughs> Only time will tell. Fulton puts up a big pull. It's got a little bit of edge fading towards the near sideline. Fielded by Lee. Early recenter to Ha in front of Claridge. New Zealand setting that zone look that we've seen from them that they've used to great success so far. Big hammer up the top, finds Boxer. Looking for Katuti Waka, a little bit of a misread, but she's able to get it. Great work by the Australian side. Conditions are optimal for big overheads. There's no wind to disrupt them. Lee uncorks a massive hammer. Finds Buxer. You do not want to test Cat Buxer. Unleashes a massive backhand, looking for Katuti Waka. Plenty of float on the disc, plenty of time for Imanya to get underneath that disc to get the read on it and secure that position for the score for Australia. It's a three point game. New Zealand nine, Australia six, game to 15. A huge moment there for the Australian side. Able to respond with points of their own. 
after Bucks' impressive performance in the first half, we had a little sideline chat during the halftime break. Come on, Cat. Let somebody else score for a change. And what's happened on the last two Australian scores? It's been Cat Buxer with the assist. That's what I call sharing. That's what I call teamwork. And again, if you like what you see, check the link in the description to buy a virtual ticket to events like this and help us support our young athletes here in New Zealand and internationally. It does make a difference. Ultimate is a wonderful sport because the barrier to entry of play is relatively low. Discs aren't that expensive. You can head to a local club, an ultimate club. They'll have a disc available for you. And as long as you've got boots and some cones, you can set up a field and play. But it's the travel. It's the international representation. Our young ladies from New Zealand, Kahu, had a great performance at the World Junior Ultimate Championships in Poland earlier this year. And supporting them to play at high level is what grows the sport in the country. So Australia coming down on defense. Whitlock centers to Clark, finds Swinson far sideline. Wu putting a lot of pressure on the disc. Doan sags off to shut down Whitlock's deep options. Has to work to King Griffin on the far sideline. Lewis back to Clark. Lawson manages to sell Warnock. Great space, Whitlock fills, gets the disc. Doan shutting that down. It goes wide outside the hands of Weber. That's what the Australian defensive side need. We've got Mackay with the disc, supported by Asprey in the handler space. Australia trying to grip a bit more width. Great work. But King Griffin manages to get a read on that one. Great sell by Lewis to get that separation, but the defensive coverage line was enough to shut that one down. Doan marking Whitlock. Blackburn pressuring Clark. Threads one through to Whitlock, managing to escape Doan yet again. Puts a big forehand up, looking for Swinson. Finds her in the end zone, right at the back. No need for a layout this time. A very well floated throw by Whitlock. Finds Swinson as New Zealand break double digits for the first time in the game. 10-6 over the Southern Terra. Teams taking their time to prepare for the next point. The second half, a lot more aggressive from the Australian side. We're seeing them trade. New Zealand had a bit of a walk away with the first half, but Australia really firing in the second half, putting on the pressure, able to get those offensive holds, having that control, and, and I guess having that trust in the teammates to really send those shots deep. Bowen with the pull. Are we going to see New Zealand come down in that zone defense? It looks like Bowen again covering that middle space. Ha unable to secure the reset to Lee. 
Great work by Brown, pressuring that throw back. We see Whitlock. Supported by Grant in the handler space. An upline, shut down by Kat Buxer. Great cover by Suddy on the mark as well. Position back to Australia. We see that zone again. We know that Lee Buxer connection is strong. Conditions are optimal. Are we going to see any nice overheads to try and chip open this zone? Simard on the disc. There it is. Not quite able to find Rosenthal, but a great look nonetheless. Bowen with a forehand. Finds Stacey Mather. Goes up by one more. 11 6. Still in favor of New Zealand. But anybody's game. Still plenty of time on the clock. Still plenty of points left to be played. Doan, Warnock, Mackay, Wongrachu, Childs, all taking the line. like Claridge with the disc for the New Zealand defense. Ogilvy, Sawyer, Fulton, Murgatroyd. Gao and McCoy. Nice long pull there by the defense. Fielded early by Warnock, finds Mackay, center field. Jenkins developing a deep cut as the New Zealand player zone the other way. Threading through the middle, Langston wants it. Great work by Brianna Murgatroyd. Good defensive position to generate that turn. Langston had a good bid, but with players in the way and it being a non-contact sport, it's Fulton on the far sideline with a big forehand looking for Sawyer, but it fades to the far side. And Mackay with a little bit of contact, but and a call has been made. So they'll have that conversation. It's a non-contact sport and self-officiated. It's up to the players to determine what happened. From our perspective, it looked a little bit like Sawyer had missed the bid. And then the contact happened. But looks like there is a question about perspective from the sideline, possibly. And so just waiting for this conversation to resolve to determine whether or not New Zealand or Australia will take possession.
So the foul call has been contested. The disc will return to the last uncontested play, which will be uh, Fulton on the far sideline with the disc. Marked by Trinity Doan for the Australian defence. Players will reset to where they were on the field when the uh, last uncontested possession was had. And so a violation's been called. The disc was checked in just before everyone had to reset. Now with everyone back in a good position. Fulton with the disc marked by Doan. Claridge on the reset. It goes high, but she's got plenty of time. Blackburn shutting down the next look. Murgatroyd faked out of the handle space. Oh, great work by Warnock. Huge defensive awareness seeing that thread going through. Managing to shut that down. It's Blackburn. Warnock. Pressured by the zone, but Childs has it. Good hands. Mackay. Warnock's available. Blackburn to use the width, but puts a forehand up. Finds Jenkins right on the doorstep. Who's going to be there to support? Mackay. Only a few meters away from a score. What are we going to see? Big backhand wide. Doan with a huge bid after the disc gets tipped by the defense, but it's not going to be enough. Murgatroyd puts one up. It's too long. There's nobody there. Great chase down by Sawyer. Good attempt. Good territory by New Zealand as they set their zone again. Ogilvy, Sawyer, McCoy setting up that initial arrowhead, trying to pin the disc down to the sidelines. Fulton in the middle. Murgatroyd, Claridge in the deep space. Warnock with the disc now, threads one all the way through, finding a wide open Langston, untouched by the defense. Puts a big backhand up, Claridge wants underneath it, so does Doan, Claridge comes down with it. Langston shuts down Fulton, trying to get the disc. McCoy wide open on the near side, but it goes far side, finds Sawyer, Mackay on the mark. Claridge with a great up line, plenty of separation, manages to get it even though Mackay puts a hand to it. Claridge with a big backhand near side, looking for McCoy. Finds her just outside the end zone. And it's Ogilvy to close. Great patience there by the New Zealand side. Kahu, 12 over the Terra, six. Three points away from a victory. New Zealand so far undefeated across uh, all games in the Tri-Series. There is a lot to be said for the home field advantage. We saw two impressive wins. Uh... New Zealand over Australia yesterday, New Zealand over Japan in the women's division. And the men's division, we had two, uh, two players, New Zealand uh, Opens over the Australian Open team, under 20s, Katsupo versus Thunder. New Zealand with an impressive effort in the first game, and an Australian lead slowly clawed back by the New Zealanders in the second match. But this is a different energy to Australia today. They've given so little up. They've fought hungrily for every single disc. Every, every air ball has been played for. They haven't left anything behind. Players are making huge bids, doing everything within their impressive athletic prowess to make sure that those discs are secured, that they're at least played for. We're not seeing a lot of Australian throwaways that don't end up with their intended receiver on the ground, which is exactly what you want to see. You want to see those players leaving everything behind, giving everything for their teammates, being willing to commit and play big to try and get that position and converting that into a score. Lee, Ha, Graham, Rosenthal, Koning, Kofutiwaka, Wong Ritchie on the offensive line for the Southern Terra. Clark with a big pull, nice high backhand, a lot of float. Are we going to see that New Zealand zone? It looks like as Clark sets up in the deep space. Brown shutting down that first throw, but Lee gets the reset. Emma Whitlock covering that middle space. King Griffin hoping to support and shut down Lee with the disc. Threads one wide, finds Graham on the far sideline. The zone a little bit out of position. Quick early reset. 
Matera needing players to cut through to shut down that zone, work through it. Ha, back to Wonga Chu. Big fakes, hoping to shift that defense. Australia slowly being pushed backwards. Goes up, finds Lee, gets vertical, puts a big forehand up, looking for Koning, she's underneath it. She's got the hands. Tries to look back early, it's shut down by Brown, can't find Lee, finds Ha. Ha, back to Lee, far sideline. Brown, King Griffin putting a huge amount of pressure on, but the disc is able to go wide. Wong Ritu pulls it down, right in front of the camera again. Just where she loves to be, finds Koning. Big cross field. Swinson trying to chase. Waiting for the support from Brown, it doesn't come. Meg Graham, great hands there. Puts one back to Lee. Big width to Wong Chu. King Griffin with a big chase. Koning, not quite able to grab it. Great offensive pressure, great positioning. Whitlock puts a big one up, but it's Wong Chu who's going to eat a bid from the aggressive defense of Ha. And an injury called. As I said, these Australian players leaving nothing behind, being willing to make huge sacrifices for their teammates. She's upright, ladies and gentlemen. We did it. Great, amazing work by Wong Chu to shut that one down. Grateful to take a substitution by Astbury as Australia keep possession despite a great effort and a long throw by Whitlock. Lee and Ha working quickly. Rosenthal hoping to crash through the zone. Lee's got it. Kotudi Waka trying to threaten the deep space. Not really testing Clark at the moment. Rosenthal to Lee. Rosenthal wants to get underneath it, so does Graham. Graham brings it down, what an amazing grab. Ha. Lee's calling to use the width of the field, doing a great job of quarterbacking this game. Uh, looks like uh, that might have been a strip call. So still having contact with the disc, uh, but it was pulled out of Lee's hand by the movement of Brown. So not a clean block. The disc is gonna be checked back in. A little bit of communication as we figure out what's happening. Uh, on a great upline, but it's shut down by Swinson. Just waiting for it. Whitlock puts one deep, looking for Swinson, wanting the bookends. Pressured by Asprey, but it's not enough. Swinson comes down with it. First the block, then the score. Some great effort by number 38, Swinson for Kahu. New Zealand now two points away from victory, and a timeout has been called. 13-6 currently in favor of New Zealand. We'll take just a short break while these teams take a moment to recons uh, reconsolidate everything that has happened so far, everything that is going well, everything that isn't. A lot of input from the coaches to really tweak a few minor things as we close out this game, as we come towards its end. Still anybody's game, seven points is not an insurmountable margin by any stretch of the imagination. The door slowly closing on Australia's chances of victory, but there's still a crack. There's still an opportunity for them to, to, to stem the tide and shut down this impressive uh, New Zealand pressure. 
Uh, but we will be back shortly once the timeout breaks to continue with this very, very exciting game in our Tri-Series. Australia first to break the huddle. Their energy high. The intensity there. <laughs> to come out on offense. New Zealand just breaking the huddle now. Remaining focused, up by seven. Some great plays. The conditions are a lot better. The long distance ultimate, as we've seen. New Zealand in particular. They've got Whitlock, Bowen, uh, Clark in particular. Very confident, very willing to send those long shots up and come away with them. They've got great receivers and Swinson. McCoy, Fulton as well. But the Southern Terra are hungry, very, very hungry. We've seen that on the last couple of points. Huge amounts of pressure on that defense. Not willing to let anything fall to the hands of New Zealand. Ha and Wong Ritu in particular putting on some amazing displays. Doan as well. Very, very aggressive on the desk. Warnock with amazing reaction speed and great vision to shut down quick resets uh, on, on short plays from New Zealand. And each point with the same energy as if it were the first point. Fulton puts it up. It goes high. Touches down, a side stack call, trying to create the width of the, uh, use the width of the field to possibly isolate Doan, but as the zone by New Zealand gets set up, Bucks is back to help out, finds Lee and Mackay in need of support. Warnock's there as well. Puts it up high, looking for Langston. Langston comes down with it. Bucks are wide open. Slight miscommunication thrown behind the receiver. Boxer's speed is just too much. Australia back on defense now. Some great work by the Aussies there to bring that disc up field, working the entire way. Bowen at the disc now, marked by Warnock. A big fake early to signal something to happen in the downfield space. Finds Claridge in the midfield. Marked by Doan. Bowen having to go all the way around, shut down by Warnock. Has to find Mather on the sideline, but the pressure from Buxer is a little bit much. There it is, a big shot up. Buxer finds Koning. It's almost like Buxer refuses to catch any more points this game. Far too keen to throw the assists. 13-7. Six points in it. Great work by the Australian side. An amazing... Offensive hold there.
someone could go and tell Kat Buxer from the commentary booth that she is allowed to still score points this game. It's okay. But great work by both of these sides. Huge pressure. Amazing intensity. What a great way to set the tone for the day. Got another couple of games for you after this one. Another New Zealand-Australia uh, clash. We have the Australian women's facing off against the Japanese women's under-20 team. And then our final match for the day is going to be New Zealand versus Japan to close us out for our tri-series. As we have to bid farewell to our Australian friends, these amazing competitors. For early flights back on the Sunday afternoon. Kai, Doan, Jenkins, Lewis, Wu, Childs. Some great Australian on the talent. Matched up. Murgatroyd, King Griffin, Simard, Whitlock to field. Murgatroyd gets it. Slow to start the New Zealand offense this time. Brown in a bit of space. Maybe a bit slow to respond to Whitlock's fakes. Works the far sideline. Finds King Griffin. Marked by Jenkins. Lewis on a great undercut. Overthrown. Intercepted by Mackay. <coughs> to Childs. Jenkins on the far sideline. An opportunity here for Australia. Just what they're looking for. Lewis trying to pressure the deep space. King Griffin on the mark. Blackburn wide open. On the near sideline. Mackay pressured down by Lewis. There it is, a big forehand. Who's it for? Targeting towards Doan, but a little bit of miscommunication as to who that was for. Maybe the offense was a little slow to respond. Australia pressuring back on defense now. New Zealand setting up in a horizontal stack. With a backhand force. We see Sawyer on an undercut early. Lewis loops around, marked by Mackay. Simard streaking deep. Georgia Brown manages to sell Lewis. Big forehand, fine Sawyer, marked by Wu. Georgia Brown just toes that disc in. Has to work back towards midfield to Whitlock. Back across to Brianna Murgatroyd, just outside her hands. Australia with an opportunity here. Australia coming out in a vertical stack. Trying to pressure the depth. Lewis marked by Brown. As Childs goes deep, Mackay on an up line. Lewis pulls it down for Australia. Great work. Mackay has a comfortable reset option. Has to go all the way around, pressured by Lewis, but she's got the disc on the far sideline. Blackburn there in support, Trinity down. Lewis with a point block, manages to touch that disc to turf. Great work by the New Zealand defense. Whitlock, far sideline, New Zealand again in that horizontal stack. We're going to see Sawyer initiate. Gets the disc this time. Marked by Wu, there's Lewis open. Great dynamic grab there. Doan tries to shut down the long shot, finds King Griffin, far sideline, marked by Jenkins. Who's open? Whitlock on a nice up line. Throws one long. Off the hands of Simard would have been a great string of passes up that far sideline. Just a little bit quick on the tempo there for New Zealand. That half second holster before letting that throw go could have been the difference. Paige Mackay, number 30 for the Australian side. Marked down in the corner by Simard. Childs shut down by Murgatroyd, but the upline is available. Jenkins wants it, but King Griffin is the one who touches it down. Whitlock again, we know she's got the long throws. Everything is within her range right now. 
Finds Murgatroyd center field. Childs can't stop the forehand. Sawyer comes down with it. 14-7. 14-7. Two New Zealands. One point away from a New Zealand finish. Australia still playing incredibly well despite the score difference. Not reflective of all at all of the intensity put on by either of these teams. Owen to pull for New Zealand for what the Kahu ladies, the under 20 New Zealand's national squad are hoping will be the last time in this match. And what the Australian offense, Lee, Rosenthal, Kutudiwaka, Buxa, Asprey, Suddy, and Graham are hoping is gonna be the first of a string of points that'll pull them back into this game. Five minutes left on the clock. But it's a game to 15 regardless. An Australian victory here demands perfection. But likewise, New Zealand cannot afford to let lift on the gas. Any gaps they give the Australians will be punished and we see that New Zealand zone sitting early. The disc goes high, gets Rosenthal from Asprey. Ogilvy on disc. Puts one wide, finds Lee. Swinson can't stop it. McCoy in that middle space. Shutting down the wide reset, but Bucks is able to crash through and find it. Puts a big forehand up, finds Suddy. Takes it one-handed. Looks back for Lee. Swinson closing in. Disc moves across the field to find Rosenthal. Big wide shot to Asprey. One of those core calm handlers in that Australian set. Lee calling for it on the width. Puts a big forehand up, looking for Buxa, but the run through doesn't come. There it is, Buxa going long. Kutuni Waka on the read, there it is. That's what we want to see. Well done, Australia Southern Terra, as we go up by one, a great hold. 14-8. Really is starting to feel like the Captain Buxer show. <laughs> but again, all of that offensive presence is not concentrated on one individual. Those moments of individual success are the culmination of great teamwork, great vision, great trust in their players. Huge plays, Kuturi Waka wide open in that deep space. Number 15 for the Southern Terra. Just timing the pressure of that deep space with that sideline throw to Buxa, creating that opportunity, reeling that one in, secure hands right at the back of the end zone. Just what Australia needed. Australia need, needing to field a strong defensive line here to really pressure the New Zealanders into making mistakes that they are able to capitalize on. And so we see some very hungry Australian players, Trinity Doan, Jenkins, Mackay, Blackburn, Lewis and Childs. Kai with a big pull. 
Lawson and Claridge. Claridge just able to keep that one. The Australian offense slowly gets into position. Warnock shuts down. Has to go wide, but Fulton's got it now. Pressured by Lewis. Fulton calling for undercuts. We see a wide open Gao get the disc near the sideline. Claridge with a big backhand looking for Simard. McCoy in support, and that's the game. Perhaps a little bit out of position, maybe trying to do too much on that Australian defense creates the opportunity that the Kahu needed to put the final point on the board, put the nail in the coffin. So far undefeated in this tri-series, the Trans-Tasman event in 2022 in Tamaki Makoto, New Zealand, Australia, Japan. But the real winner was you getting to watch such fantastic ultimate with the support of Ulti TV. Head across to patreon.com slash Ulti TV and give us your spare change. And check the link in the description to buy a virtual ticket to support events like this that allow our youth athletes to perform at such a level and really cut their teeth against some high level teams uh, from our neighbors in Australia and all around the globe. My name is Blair Monroe. Some have referred to me as the voice of New Zealand ultimate. Um, but I will be back with you shortly to be your eyes and ears on the ground for the next game in our Trans-Tasman series. Thank you very much. Alti.tv.